Right, mailbag time. Got some stuff here. This is some test gear we're going to look at. We'll do that last. So stick around and find out what it is. Put the links down below for these things if you're interested in anything. Well, these arrived fast. I ordered these last week. End of last week. So these are some little um, rubber boots. Let me try and get one out without making a huge mess. So you put this over a bulb. Now I've got these thinking about automotive situations where you've got backlighting on dashboards, things like that, on various indicators. I thought, oh, I'll get some of these little coloured boots because the amount of times you get these things and they've actually failed. They're old and they've you know they've gone a bit brittle because of the heat and things like that. So they, they tend to fail a bit. So replacing them would be nice. And I thought, oh, let's actually have a look and see if I can find some. And I found these ones. I think there's some other ones coming as well, some different sizes. I think so anyway. I think these were four millimetres. There were links for these things down below. I've done a bit of a spending spree recently. I spent a lot of money recently. I've just spent two hundred dollars on capacitors. Not due soon, but you know, it's gonna be weeks away, but you know. Ah here we go. Some more. Just like those ones, but these ones are smaller. So I think these are three millimeter versions. These are more like the type you'd often see in cars. You do see times sometimes these are this sort of size. Not often, but usually it's this size. And I've got both sizes in this, so I've got you know plenty of coverage between the two. I had to replace them recently on something and luckily I did actually have a spare one in my drawers which was close enough in colour. That was the last one I had, it's spares. So now I've got a bunch of them. No more worries about that. And what else have we got here? Here you go, M3 nuts. I expect today is what they be because stocking up. Alright, not sure it's in this one. But it's sitting here for a while so I probably knew when it arrived but now I've forgotten. Ah, okay. Just some batteries, so we've got a couple of 9 volt batteries, standard alkaline lines, not exciting. And some Enloop Pro AAAs. Uh, these are rechargeable nickel metal hydrides. I've only just really started getting back into rechargeables again. I sort of went away from them. I used to have them as a kid when I was, you know, with NICADs and what have you, and things have progressed a bit since then. And I haven't really used them since then. I think I got some about a year ago. And there's lots of things which I just keep replacing batteries in. And I've decided, well, this is just ridiculous. I should just get nickel metal hydrides and do things rechargeably instead. And, you know, better for the environment and that sort of stuff. And these pack a bit more power than a lot of batteries anyway. Those are the ones I'll get are just like the, the cheap throwaway things. You get a like, multi-pack of 24 or something and cost you five bucks. You know, you don't get much out of that, do you? These are considerably more expensive. As long as you've got enough of them on hand, you can just swap them out, charge them up, carry on. And I think really it's like the best thing people should be doing. Rechargeable batteries, better for the environment. And these aren't really a compromise anymore. NICAD used to be a compromise. You know, there was a bit of a difference there between NICAD performance and alkalines. These, not so much. So, might as well get these. Now, I do apologise if I'm out of focus and stuff like that, because my HDMI cable, which runs to my external screen normally, so I can see what I'm doing on the external screen, has failed. So I can't actually see, I've got there's a little tiny little screen which is like this big on the camera and it's really hard to see if it's focused, so hopefully I'm focused. If I'm not, sorry, I can't do much about that right now. I can't even like view it on computer screen instead of the monitor because there's no cable. <laughs> Interesting packaging. Well, it looks like it's well packed. Well, you know, I said be plenty, plenty of padding right around. Not on the bottom though. Bottom not so good, hold on. Pull the side out. Bottom has only got the bubble wrap. So it had all the paper on the top, but not on the bottom. So I think it's barely DEF POM approved. Anyway, let's get this out the way. So I've been watching one of these for a little while. Um, probably I'm waiting I don't know, maybe a year for one of these to come up. I almost bought one about a year ago and then I think I just bought something different instead. I had a choice between two different things based on finances and I chose the other thing. So I've decided to get this. Now does it work? I don't know. Let's have a look. First thing I notice is on the back here we've got a big dent on the transformer and the back chassis. So that will need straightening out. It's also been impacted on the back. Line voltage, I need to change that before I do anything. Um, now I've been caught out by this before. I think 
it is set to what? I'm not sure what voltage it is. Now this has caught me out before because I got these back to front. Right? So there's another piece of Boonton gear I got about six months ago and because I didn't interpret these, I interpreted them in reverse. I overvoltaged it and popped the fuse. Luckily it didn't do any damage. Yeah, the interpretation of these, I think the black is the background, the white is the front. So I think right now it is on 220 volts. Yeah, because so I want 240. So I'm going to flip that one up. Hopefully it's the right around. If it's not the right around, if I've got it backwards, I'll be doing 100 volts instead. Let's hope I've got it right. This time. Well, let's flip it over. There's the top. Looks good. The side looks good. The bottom looks alright. That foot there was twisted, but I think it's nothing. It's, it's straightened up again now. I think it must have been like a little anchor point. That side looks good. The front looks like this. There you go. It's a 2520 RF calibrator. So this puts out calibrated RF levels. So you can verify things like your power meters and things like that. Analyzers and what have you. Using this to generate calibrated output levels. So you can use it as a verification tool and maybe calibration tool. Now I did something similar to this before, which was, it was 2510. Same series, looked very similar to this. They had a backlight issue on the screen. The uh, electroluminescent display backlight was really, really dim, barely working. I ended up swapping a whole display out. Thankfully, it is a pink compatible to a standard LCD. Let's power this up and see if I've got this voltage right. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to wind the voltage up from 100 volts and see what happens. In fact, what I'll also do, before I do that, is pop the fuse out and see what fuse has got in it. Always check the fuse. 250 volt. Must be the other end, which is hidden. 3 tenths of an amp, so that's 300 milliamps. Which sounds fine. The actual rating is 200 milliamps for 240 volt, but I think this will do for now. It will work, hopefully. Right. Let's wind the voltage down a bit. Turn the power on. That's currently turned off. Let's bring this around so we can see the poppy meter. Yeah, hopefully this is all in focus. Well, this is hopefully in focus. So, you bring us down to say 100 volts just to check this out first. Well, it boots at 100 volts. 130 milliamps. Display looks good. Um, but, I don't know, it's, if I wind this up a little bit, 130 volts, I'm looking for excessive current, doing 200 milliamps, that switches might be back to front. I think this is what caught me out last time. Let's change these around. Right, so if I the other way, maybe it's separate around. Okay, we'll try this. I think this is what caught me out last time. Do it again. 100 volts in. Not powering up. Yes, that was definitely backwards before. Okay, so winding this up. Here we go, it's just starting to come up now. And obviously, it's not booted properly. It's half booted. Okay, let's power it down, power it up. Boon. Yeah, no. Okay, power's too low still. Bring up some more. There we go. Right, it's still a proper boot on it. So I think I've got it right now. 220 volts. That's doing 50 milliamps coming in, so that's fine, that's better. So yeah, so I definitely had that backwards. So that's the same thing that caught me out last time. So I'm only 230 volts. That's better. Lucky I checked that this time. Again, I interpreted the reverse. I got it backwards, which is why I wanted to be thorough this time. But the backlight looks good. You can actually see it quite well this time. Yeah, it's not so good on camera though. But I can see it here just fine. I'll put on, that works. Right, let's plug this into something and do some testing, shall we? See what comes out of it. I don't know if you see it on camera or not. I've set the 0 dBm, output is turned on. I've got it hooked up to my spectrum analyzer through this cable here. And let's see what we're getting. And there you go, there's the spectrum analyzer. So it's outputting 30 megahertz. And at 0 dBm output, I'm going through a 10 dB. Um, attenuator as well on the front panel as well as a DC block. Good things to have always installed on your SSA is to protect the input. So we're currently getting 
basically at minus 10 dB. So that's good. So I've changed the scaling and stuff on the SSA. So now I've got it set to 0 dB at the top here and also added an offset for the uh, 10 dB attenuator so we can see a real time scaling on here. So still outputting 0 dBm. Minus 10 dBm. Minus 20. Minus 30. Minus 40. Minus 50. Minus 60. Minus 70 which is as this and goes. That is it, minus 70. So can I go any lower than that? No, that's it. Minus 70 is as low as this unit goes. So that is actually looking bang on according to the SSA. That actually correlates. So that's good. Looks like the output's perfect. Now one thing I also want to check for is the reference going right up to 20 dBm. So let's do 20 there. So 0 right now. Let's do 10. Yep, and there's 20. Perfect. Can I come down in smaller steps? I can. There's like 15 dBm there. That works. Great. So that's nice. It works perfectly. No problems at all. That's good. It's actually quite nice to get a piece of test gear which is not broken for a change. But uh, obviously you've got a bit of a dent on the back there. I might look at trying to fix that. I'll see how hard it is to get it apart and have a look. Let's open it up and have a little look inside it, eh? See what's going on inside. I think it's always good here today occasionally. If I can get these off there. See if there's any capacitors that need to be replaced. <laughs> Come on. It's a tight fit. Right, that is the top, and yes, there is capacity needs replacing. That is bulging. So, yep, yeah, we have to do a recap. And this has got the same construction as the 5210, which I worked on. In fact, it may even be the same board. It looks exactly the same inside here. It looks identical. It says 2510-2. Might be the same board, maybe it's just different software. Hmm, interesting. But yeah, recap is needed. So, this will be a project in the future. I'll pull this apart and do a repair on it. Let's have a look at the bottom side, see what's under there. Also, have to see if we can do something about. I have to pull that transformer apart here about taking a dent out of it. On the bottom side, nothing to see under there. Yeah. But the transformer can be taken apart, so that's something I will look at doing, I think, and see if I can get that back cover off and take the dents out. In case it's rubbing on the windings, because that could be potentially disastrous. Excellent. Future project. I thought I'd add this into this mailbag. This has just arrived as well. It's from Zotec, so I think it's as a review item, actually. Right. Yeah. It's an LCR tweezer. Cool. This be very useful. Now, I already have a tweezer. Not with this one, obviously I've got the uh, Shannon tweezer, which was sent to me a while ago to review. And I use that occasionally, probably not as much as I should do. But Zoe's released this thing, and this could be good. Now I'm just going to give you a quick look at it now, for the purpose of the video. But I'll do a review on this. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. It may or may not be in focus, like I said I've got a really tiny screen right now and I can't see what the hell's going on. So. Resistance, capacitance, inductance, there's dissipation. So watch out for the view on this, this will be very soon. It looks pretty good though. USB C charging, nice. I'm not going to turn it on, you can wait to the review. Thanks a lot, Zotip, for sending it to me for no cost. Other videos to watch down below if you're interested in other things, repairs, things like that. There will be a repair done on this, so if you're watching this video in the future, you know, in a, probably a few weeks time or something like that, I'll probably have a repair done for this as well. Look out for that video. And subscribe over there if you're not subscribed, and Patreon support link over there if you want to support me on Patreon. One thing with Patreon, there's a new thing coming out. If you're intending to use the Patreon app to support me, it's okay currently, before November 2024. After November 2024, Apple was charging an extra 30% on Patreon supported memberships. So it's not Patreon's fault, it's being enforced upon them by Apple. 
So if you're using the iOS app to support me on Patreon after November 2024, you're paying 30% more. Apple are taking that, not me. Apple are taking 30% of the money you're giving me. So if you want to support me after November 2024, do it through the website. Go directly to the website, use Safari, whatever. Do it through the Patreon website instead, rather than using the Patreon app to support me. That way, all the money you donate actually comes to me instead of 30% of it going to Apple, which is no good for anyone. That's just greedy. Catch you later.